Well, hello, my friends. This is Steve from Amateur Hour Gaming, and welcome to day 41 of the 100 Day Challenge. Now, today's going to be a little bit special. We're going to get two videos out today to make up for the fact that uh, we had a little trouble uploading day 40, and it arrived a day late. But you're still going to get 100 videos in 100 days, so I consider the challenge still uh, up and running and ready to go. But we're going to continue our factorial play. We're going to finish level 3 of the demo today. It's going to be awesome, so let's r get started. So having just started level 3, this tips and tricks window popped up for me. Uh, apparently the furnace can smelt stone bricks from stone and steel from iron. The steel needs to be researched. Now we won't be able to do research uh, in this game because I don't think that's unlocked. But uh, I'll leave the tips and tricks on for now. Let's hit next and see what else they get us. Ah, two sides of a belt. The left and right side of the transport belt can be used independently for different resources. Inserter puts things on the distant part of the belt. Now this is interesting because we're going to want to move, uh, say, fuel and also something that we want to smelt on the same belt, and that actually works pretty well. I had uh, good luck with it last time. What's up next? Stone furnaces can be rebuilt by steel furnace without the need to mine the first one first. Okay. Again, these people these people are from the Czech Republic, so let's let's be kind about their English. Uh, the similar works for. The similar works for assembling machines, transport belts, inserter chests, and similar. It can be used to change the direction of a transport belt. So I feel like what they're saying is you can sort of like just upgrade your furnaces from one to the next. That's pretty cool. Oh, an electric network info. I use the left mouse button on an electric pole to open the stats of the electric network when it's connected to. Okay, that's neat. Yeah, foam poles are neat. Uh, stack transfer. Holding shift and left mouse button will move a whole item stack. Yeah, we know that. Uh, inventory transfer using control on the left button, mouse button will move all the items, all the item stacks of the same type between inventories. That's very cool. That's very cool. This can be used, for instance, to transfer all the transport belts from a wooden chest to the main inventory. Ah, that's neat. Yeah, they've they've really thought about the uh, the controls in this game. I have to say that I'm very pleased with that so far. And a fast entity transfer, invoking control plus left left mouse button allows you to perform a transfer with the selected entity without opening its GUI. If the player's hand is empty, the transfer happens from the entity to the player's inventory, and vice versa when the player's hand is full. So this would be neat, right? You could just like control and left click to drop, you know, say fuel in a furnace or something. So that's very cool. And quick bar access. Okay, you can use number keys here to access the items on your quick bar. I'm a fan of mouse driven stuff, but uh, nonetheless, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, and then shift one, two, three, four, five to get into the second half. So that's neat. Uh, Clean cursor. Invoking Q will move the item stack from the cursor into your inventory quick bar. Huh. Okay. That's cool. And invoking Alt will toggle extended info. Ah, right. So you can turn on or off the extended inventory, which is neat. Uh, building while running. The quickest way to build more stuff in a straight line, like transport belts, is to hold the left mouse button on the place you want to be built and run in the desired direction. That's cool. Yeah, that's neat. And fast building of electric lines. The fastest way to build electric lines is to drag the build key while moving the next co pole will be built on the furthest possible place automatically. Neat. Whoa, lots of tips and tricks. Let's hope we remember all this. Uh, invoking the middle mouse button on the quick bar slot lets you see what this slot is reserved for. No other item can be placed in this slot, and items of the selected type will always be priorly moved into this slot. Well, it'll only stack uh, items of that type in the particular slot. That's neat. And usable items are activated by pressing the quick bar key on the corresponding slot. I guess that's a bomb of some kind? No, I don't think you get to play with grenades, which is lame. Okay. Alright, I could really use some equipment from our crashed ship. Okay, well, let's zoom out. Uh, if I had enough electricity, I could build a radar to locate the crash site. Okay. I have the electricity test set up almost ready, I just need some water from the lake. So we need to build an offshore pump connected to boilers on a water ground transition. Okay, well first up, I think what we're going to do is loot this chest. Okay, there's copper plates, iron plates, and some coal. And what have we got in terms of inventory? We have 50 belts, uh, 2 electric mining drills, 10 inserters, and 10 stone furnaces. Okay. Okay, so I think what we need to do here is we need to hit E. And where is this water building pump? What do we need? Boiler, iron axe, back to ground. Where is it? Uh, this must be it. Offshore pump. 
I need one pipe, one iron gear, and two electric circuits. Uh, why can't we build that? Three iron pipe. Why do I not have any iron? I didn't take any of this out of my inventory, because I'm a McGenius. Excellent. All right. Let's just start with one offshore pump. Oh, do you see that shadow? You see that fish? I bet it's a dangerous space fish. Alrighty. And what do you do? You just plop this baby right on the side of it. I initially thought I had to have pipes, but uh, as well. But you drop it right there. So that's now throwing water into this thing, and you can see the water is flowing into the steam engine, but it is too cold to produce any electricity. Awesome. Make sure the water flowing into the steam engine is hot enough. Well, it's, how can we do that, eh? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So again, I'm just, I'm holding the stack. Yeah, good. The steam engine is now producing electricity. Excellent. Whoop. Tap is the key that we want. That's excellent. There are more ways to build steam engines like this. See how you can just run them right in sequence? You don't even need to have the burners in between them again. That's fantastic. Or, if you want to get lots of mega power, check that out, eh? Check that out. That's awesome. We won't build anything that big uh, in this demo, however. Uh, not even close, I would say. Connect the electric mining drill to the steam engine using small electric poles. I will. As soon as I finish this. Okay. So now, electric poles. It's a mining drill. It's fine here. Electric poles. Okay, we're going to need some wood. So, hey, there we go. Wood. Sadly, no getting wood achievement. What can you do? Alright. Now, every time you click this, you actually get two poles for each, uh, each use. So that's pretty good. I mean, for now, we're not going to stress too much about uh, you know, pole placement, if you will. But as we get a little deeper into this, that's, uh, that's going to matter. So... No, here's the thing. Escape? No, no. Resume. Click on the clean hand, I guess. Okay. It's getting dark. I should build lamps. Yeah, those those are cool. Actually, uh, let's let's take that advice. And we'll just build one for now. In order to build radars, you will need to gather some iron plates and copper plates first. No problem. No problem. We got iron and copper all over this map. Use electric mining drills to mine the resources. It is much faster than the burner mining drill. It's true, and it doesn't cost anything. Keep a steady flow of coal going into your boilers, otherwise you will run out of electricity. Alright, let's get to work. Well, first up, let's build a lamp so we can see what we're doing. Oh my god, that was actually quite complex. Okay, cool. So we'll just plop this lamp. Now, it just needs to be inside one of these blue boxes. There, now it has power, and you can see what we're doing. So... We have all this coal here that really, its only purpose is going to be to be fed into these things. So what I'm going to do is actually set up our first sort of, you know, mini transport belt, right? So we're going R. Oh, that's the direction I want it to go. R. R. That connects. R. 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 That connects to... So, then we're going to take these inserters, spin them around, one, two, three, and we'll just take our last remaining pole, and we will plunk it right there. There you go. So, instantly automated uh, coal refilling. I think it fills it up to five, and then it stops and waits. Whoa! Biter! I guess I should zoom out a little bit. Oh, here comes another one. We got quite a good range on it. That's excellent. Yeah, these guys, they're serious. They, they keep coming at you. They keep coming at you. So since we want to go over here for iron and coal, as you can see, unless there's something interesting up here, let's zoom out a bit. It looks like stone. So iron and coal, or we've got, we've got a ton of coal here, but I think I'm going to farm these two sections over here, these two, as you can see, because we can run everything back on one transport belt, which will be lots of fun. So before we do anything else, we will need some electric poles. Two, maybe four will do. We'll try that. And then, now that those are done... Oh, and let's maybe... Uh, e, let's make another lamp. So we might want one over here. Excellent. So 
Let's string up our poles. Now, how far can we stretch these babies? Oh, actually, no, I don't want to do that first. First, I'd like to set up my miners. Now, again, were I playing this long term, I'd probably try to sort of, you know, min-max the amount of uh, ore and stuff I'm getting. Oh, I'm not close enough to place it. But for now, we're just going to plunk them basically sort of anywhere. Try to get a great big amount. There we go. We can get 2k doing it that way. Okay. So now, they don't have power yet, but that's good. That's the way I want things to be. So the output should be right there. One, two, three. I may need to build more of these, actually. Now, my goal here is to actually run these down one track all the way into here and onto this same belt. I'm going to set up a bunch of furnaces right in there, I think. Or anywhere, somewhere along this strip, anyways. But the reason I want them all in the same place is so that we can also pick the coal. How many have I got? Oh. Is this my last one? Oh no, I have 21 left. Okay, sorry guys. I went blind there for a second. Now let's rotate you up this way. And rotate you that way. Put you that way. So that's good. Now I believe... Now you remember they were talking at the beginning about how... How this works. Uh, how... Or where things end up on the belts and stuff, right? Now you can see right now... That we got the coal coming out of the bottom belt, right? By default, uh, as soon as we power these babies, which we're going to do right now, RFN, okay, as they say in the army, one. And if I just move, I should be able to place that there. Good. So that guy's got juice. More juice, more juice. How far can we get you? Oh, and not quite. That's, that's a bit unfortunate. That disappoints me, but what can you do? More place there. That's fine. We'll place it there. And a lamp, right? Let's see if we put a lamp, say, here. So you see what's happening with both of these is the, um, the ore is coming out on the top half of the belt, right? But watch this. See, now that, that's not ideal. We want to try to find a way to, to prevent that, if possible, because we're going to end up with this backlog of copper and, uh, and iron on the same thing. So for now, I'm actually going to pick this up, just to just to freeze that. Now, I managed to do this successfully at one point. Uh, regardless, let's get right to work on our production. Oh, biters! Yeah, eat it, biter. Whoa! See, what's nice about this too is as you build this up, you end up with like these sort of more and more obstacles that these little buggers have to deal with, which, as far as I'm concerned, is very cool. Um, we'll put you here. I think we'll pick up this lamp. Put you back down. We'll pick up this lamp here. And we'll find another place to put that. Ah, uh, uh, even there is good. So of course, these have no fuel. Oh, that was a terrible place for that to be placed. Let's see if I can pick this guy up. And if I put you, like, here? Excellent. And we'll pick you up. Yeah, a lot of shuffling. Like I said, I said in the first episode, you really want to, like... Shoot, you want to try and plan ahead as much as possible. This section's going to get crowded real fast. Can I pick you up and place you somewhere else? Uh, will you link everybody? Uh, that's pretty good. Now let's try some of these inserters now. So basically, what I'm hoping happens here is that, say, this inserter, once I stop standing where I want to put it, see, it's taking ore. Oh, and I was hoping it was smart enough to take... See, it wants to go down and take fuel now, right? But the problem is we have this copper in there. So let's, let's see if we can clear out some of this copper. Let's just F everything here. <laughs> That's not exactly what I meant. And see, there you go. You see, now, did you, did you notice that? Right down there, what it's done is it's picked coal off the back side and then iron off the front side. And uh, really, it, it's quite content to, to do that, right? So if I can just get a second arm in here, like this, and it will receive power. Oh no, 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 I made a mistake, guys, I made a mistake. Let's, so let's juggle things a little bit here. Pick you up, stone furnace, put you there. It's fine, now no power, eh? Let's see if we can pick this guy up. And where can I, can I sneak you in? Oh, I can. And then we'll do the same thing again here. 
So that's our iron production pretty much sorted out, right? I mean, we could potentially expand on that, but uh, for now, I'm, I'm reasonably content with that. And for... For copper, for copper, we're going to need the coal as well, right? But that's the basic idea. Oh, let's put a... Uh, let's make a couple of poles here. Make another, make another pole, just so that our light actually works. Uh, that should connect. That's fine. There we go. And we have one to spare. So, basically, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to attempt to duplicate this process to produce copper. Of course, the only issue that's coming to mind is that we don't actually have... We don't actually have access to the coal at the moment. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the end of, say, you know, episode one of uh, the Day 42 double feature. And we will come back and try to replicate our success here. Uh, with copper production and we'll continue to work towards these goals so once again my name is Steve uh, thank you very much for hanging out with me on day 41 of the 100 day challenge thumbs up if you like the video thumbs down if you don't please feel free to comment either way and don't forget to come back for the next video when we will be making a submachine gun as you can see take it easy my friends